pieces. And when the kids left the nest, I found something else to fill it. A quick glance and they make us smile. I'm looking for seasonal employment. Some make us laugh out loud. We think being hard of hearing has worked for us. We never hear each other nag. With a simple picture, a few words, sometimes no words at all, a cartoon can capture the big picture and say so much. To decrease liability, you'll sit opposite Santa at his desk with his lawyer present. No laps. And that's a commentary on <laughs> just how we've become. Oh, so paranoid about everything. Two accomplished cartoonists and friends call New Hampshire home. Farmington's Stephanie Pirro is an internationally syndicated cartoonist whose female take on life's challenges is seen in about a hundred papers around the globe. She says, that's the clean laundry, that's the dirty, and this one's in transition. So I think a lot of women could relate to that. The best cartoons show you the moment before chaos. And that's certainly what we have here. Milton's Mike Lynch, who often shares his craft with kids, has had his work appear in publications like Reader's Digest, The Wall Street Journal, and Mad Magazine. Oh, I like that. Lynch has been creating cartoon characters ever since he can remember. When I was a kid, of course, I drew on the walls and things. And my mother, bless her heart, realized after screaming at me uh, that that's a wonderful place to draw, isn't it? So she bought some shelf paper and taped it down to the floor and so I could draw as much as I wanted. As an adult, he wound up in the business world, but before he missed his calling, he quit to draw full time and eventually found his niche. Really, it's the little cartoons for business magazines that really helped. And I think part of that was uh, that I'd been in that environment. And I thought, well, isn't this deliciously funny that I can make fun of these very people that I had to work for? I think a cartoon for Wall Street Journal where, uh, where a bunch of guys are, are looking at the, uh, at the cooler and another guy's coming along and, and one of them says, hey, we, we got a, a pool going about when the bubbles come up. And that's the kind of like ludicrous, you know, we're so bored out of our heads today kind of office baloney that, that happens. So that was my first cartoon that was ever published in a magazine. Stephanie Pirro always wanted her own comic strip, but as a woman found it hard to break into the business. The amount of women who won awards, you know, is very minimal. I was nominated actually, so that was really a big deal. Um, but it, 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 again, it's pretty much, you know, a white male profession. While struggling to get her cartoons into newsprint, she started printing them on shirts. Her label, Strip Tees. Started winning awards for the designs, the t-shirt designs is in the humor columns, which was really nice because I was like one person and these were like giant companies that were competing against me. Her success led to calendar deals, a line of greeting cards, drawings in the chicken soup books, and then finally, she made it into the funnies. So I heard from two syndicates, and you know, it never happens. Uh, it's, it's like the holy grail, getting syndicated. For more than 14 years now, her cartoons have been seen across the country every Saturday and sixth Sunday in the Six Chicks comic strip, which features the work of six female artists. So we're like in Sweden and South Africa and Italy, so we're all over the place, just not New Hampshire. So New Hampshire, come on. For Piero, relationships can spark an idea. My darling, I can't deny you anything unless it involves my time or costs money. That's kind of my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Some of her comic strips are inspired by popular books and movies like The Hunger Games. You see Cupid and he goes, oh joy, Valentine's Day is finally here. And he makes the mistake of aiming at Katniss and of course she gets him first. And her mom says, Katniss? And she says, okay, okay, mom. But love just complicates everything. And that's when it looks like finished. <laughs> He's <laughs> wearing a t-shirt says, I, I can read this just fine. But that's because I always put my shirts on inside out and wrong way. And when Lynch is searching for inspiration, he'll flip through a certain book thanks to a tip from some fellow artists. In a 
they would routinely go through the yellow pages and just put their finger on something and go, oh, fire extinguisher, think of a cartoon. So sometimes that's what I do. So it must have been gardening time and I was thinking of different things where water would come from and how would a clown do it? The most popular cartoons seem to strike a chord with people. There's some universal hook in there that a thousand word article could not explain, but the cartoon is able to smash through that in just a few seconds. There used to be a term uh, called refrigerator ability. Um, and I've seen, I've, I've been like at the Carnegie Museum and, uh, in Pittsburgh and they have one of my cartoons in the break room, which is so exciting. With the demise of several newspapers due to the internet and fewer syndication companies, today many cartoonists like Lynch and Pirro self-publish their work and cultivate a following online. There seems to be a real thirst for this. I mean, you just have to be on Facebook for a minute to see the people, as you say, sharing a cartoon. Facebook has become almost the new fridge. Yeah, yeah. That kind of stuff, there you right? go. That's a t-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> Facebook is the new fridge, baby. It's true, right?